So if you're anything like me, you probably micromanage or obsess over kind of all the little variables of your workout routine. Or if you're just getting started, uh, you'll do what I used to do, which was I used to search all these different bodybuilders or people I looked up to to try to just figure out, you know, what, what are they doing for their routine? How is it pieced together? What exercises do they do, et cetera, et cetera. So I figured I would just make a little video about kind of how to structure your own or what are some things to kind of think about as you're uh, as you're piecing it together. So there are a couple different categories we're going to focus on and we're going to take it kind of from the uh, the beginning. I don't even want to say like most important to least important because it's not really even like that, but I would just say from from broad to narrow is what we'll wind up doing here. So the first tenant that we want to think about is going to be our goal. So whether that be bodybuilding or strength training or some sort of sports specific training or maybe a hybrid of some of them, um, we want to just think about, you know, what is our ultimate priority here? Is it getting bigger or more aesthetic? Is it getting more endurance? Is it getting kind of more body control if you're a gymnast or kind of skills relative to a certain sport? Or maybe if you're older, you want to incorporate some sort of balance or flexibility or maybe kind of combinations of the different ones. Uh, for me, I typically will focus on bodybuilding, but I also am interested in increasing my relative strength. So I'm not really interested in being a power lifter or getting any sort of max in anything, but I would just like to be overall stronger just because, you know, if you're going to build these muscles, you might as well have something to show for it. So for me, uh, I would say like my, my hierarchy is kind of bodybuilding and overall aesthetics. Uh, like relative strength and then I would say like athletic function as well but uh, you know aesthetics over everything so uh, what I would say is we want to think about just kind of how to structure things based around that goal so let's say you're a football player you probably want to be agile you probably want to train certain movements that you're going to use in the sport and you probably also want to have a little bit of size and strength on you. So you'd probably do some sort of a hybrid of all of those goals. And that's important to kind of think about in terms of prioritizing everything. So something I want to kind of touch on here too is thinking about block or interval training. And another word for that is a training macro cycle. If you want to look that up, that was something that I learned about in school. And it was really enlightening to kind of see the hierarchy of everything because you know, it is one thing to kind of piece together a weekly routine, but uh, if you want to think about the big picture, it's important to kind of break down if you have a powerlifting meet coming up, how can we break down the months leading up to that to kind of peak ourselves by that time? Or if you're an Olympic athlete, you know that your, your optimal window that you want to be ready for is every four years. Or maybe if you're a bodybuilder, you have a show coming up. So how can we kind of structure everything leading up to that certain point? And, you know, for someone like me, I kind of do it more so for long term. So I don't really have like a window to try to focus on, but I do like to give myself variety. So I will usually structure kind of a block or interval in my training to where every four weeks I will kind of deviate uh, my rep scheme or set amount all under the same kind of umbrella, but I will move from maybe uh, more volume to a little bit more intensity or more kind of strength based training. And then after that four weeks, I'll, I'll move back into volume based training because it will still kind of be under that same umbrella of hypertrophy. But uh, we, we do want to switch that up so that it's not week after week doing the same thing over and over because you will plateau, you will burn out without some sort of uh, change in the variable to be able to kind of keep progressing towards something or keep kind of having an obstacle thrown in your way that you have to work through if that makes sense. So that is something to think about. So let's say you're a football player, you want to think about where you are in your season. So if you are in your competitive season, your training is going to be different from when you're in the off season and you don't have practices all the time or games all the time. And in the same vein, if you're a power lifter, and you're training for a show or a meet, 
uh, your training is going to be much different in terms of intensity than it would be kind of in your off season. And same with a bodybuilder too. You're not going to want to be really like maxing out anything or really trying to, you know, destroy yourself leading up to your competition. So something to think about. So our next tenant we want to focus on is going to be our schedule. So maybe you're splitting your time between the gym and the football field, or, you know, uh, maybe you're interested in cardio or yoga or jujitsu or something like that to where, you know, realistically, we're not committing all of our days of the week on just the weight room, if that makes sense. So what we want to think about with this is what's realistically and not idealistically going to fit within our lifestyle, because it is one thing to say, you know, I'm going to make it in six days a week and run and do this and that. But realistically, what's going to be the most optimal for you? So a lot of people will typically like to do their schedule based around days of the week. And that makes sense if you have other obligations. Let's say you have like a yoga a class on Thursday or a sports practice on Tuesday, Thursday or something like that. It makes more sense to kind of base your schedule around the days of the week. However, if you're kind of committed fully into some sort of gym related activity, uh, it might make more sense too to do, I see a lot of people do like a three day on, one day off, three day on, one day off. For me, uh, I usually will do it based on the days of the week just because it's easier to remember and kind of lock in a more consistent schedule uh, when I know what day my rest day is going to be, when I know what day of the week I'm going to be doing these things. It's a little bit easier for me to kind of prepare uh, my schedule accordingly. Our next thing we want to focus on is our split. So kind of going off of that last point, our split is going to be determined based on how many days we're going to be going into the gym. So um, if you're a beginner and you're, let's say, doing two to three days a week or so, you're probably going to be wanting to do full body days when you're in there. So that way, you know, we're having less days a week, but we're hitting those muscle groups more frequently uh, throughout the week versus just, let's say you did a chest day, a back day and a leg day. Then you've only hit those muscle groups one time that whole week. However, if you do three full body days, you've hit all of those muscle groups three times that week, if that makes sense. So especially if you're a beginner doing two to three days a week, you probably want to stick to full body days. Um, as you move more so into intermediate or if you have more time available to commit to the gym, let's say you're going four days a week, you probably want to then deviate that split to where you're doing an upper day and a lower day and doing that twice a week. So that way you can get a little bit more variety in terms of what you're doing and a little more specificity. Um, and then if you're fully kind of committed into bodybuilding or I don't want to say strength training because I feel like you're probably not going to be doing six days a week or so for strength training. Uh, but let's say you're doing six days a week for bodybuilding. You're all in for that. That's kind of what I do. Then you'll typically move into kind of a three day split to where you'll do a push pull leg day. So that'll be like chest, shoulder, tricep, back, bicep, forearm, and then legs. And then uh, you'll be repeating that throughout the week. So typically what I'll do is I'll do a six day split. I'll do a push pull leg. But the nice thing about that is on the second half of the week, when I'm doing my other three days, my other push pull leg, I can kind of diversify what exercises I'll do because I know that kind of throughout the week, I'm going to be hitting the same routine so I can switch up, you know, maybe I'll do an incline bench one day, but an incline dumbbell the other day. So that way I can practice both of those exercises, um, but kind of, I won't overload myself if that makes sense. Uh, and some people like to do a little bit different to where they'll do a shoulder arm day, a chest back day and a leg day. But typically I kind of prefer a push pull leg just because I can uh, I can hit my biceps while I'm doing back exercises uh, like pull downs or rows. And then I can kind of just polish off my biceps at the end, if that makes sense, because we've already worked those throughout the other exercises. So sometimes for me, I don't really like to commit to a full shoulder and arm day because I kind of feel like that's almost a wasted day, in my opinion. Uh, some people are different than that. Um, and I would also say it kind of goes off of how you feel. I'm not a big fan of a chest back day because I don't really like to work opposing muscle groups together because 
I just find that I kind of lose my pump, I lose my feeling, and I feel a little bit wonky when I'm doing a chest press and then a row. I kind of feel like I'm I'm pulling myself like a tug of war, whereas uh, when I do a push-pull leg kind of day, if I'm doing a push day, uh, I'm hitting all of those muscle groups that are kind of in synchronicity with each other. So as I'm doing a chest press, I'm working my chest, my shoulders, my triceps. As I'm doing a seated dumbbell press, I'm working still a little bit of my chest, my shoulders, my triceps, etc., etc. So I kind of find that I'm working all of those together, but some people don't really prefer that. And uh, that's okay, that's their prerogative. So the next thing we wanna think about is our anatomy or our exercise choice. And this is gonna be a little bit more so for bodybuilding, for powerlifting or some other things. You may just wanna think about, you know, uh, let's say with powerlifting, you want to think about those movements that you're going to be training. So if you're doing bench squat, deadlift, you're going to want to work assistive exercises that are going to also train that movement. And if you're doing a sport, you're kind of going to want to think about also like aside from your overall goal, what are some assisted exercises or exercises that can kind of help you work towards the goals that are needed within your sport. But going off of uh, specifically bodybuilding, what are some exercises that are going to give us the biggest bang for our buck in terms of our anatomy that we're trying to hit? So let's say, for example, you're doing a back day. Now, when we think about our back, we have so many muscles that are kind of within the back that we're trying to work to where if you just did, let's say, um, a cable row and maybe a machine row and a barbell row or other things like that, is that really going to be the most effective workout for you, if that makes sense? If, if you're trying to hit the whole of the back, is working only a tiny minutia of that back going to give you the biggest bang for your buck? So we really want to think about how we're going to choose the exercises within our routine to give us the most benefit we can and be the most effective we can. Because a lot of times I feel like I see bodybuilders kind of go out of their way to do exercises that are a little bit more kind of funky or unique or specific to where, you know, is doing a curl with a rope attachment around a dumbbell going to give you the same efficiency as maybe a preacher curl will or a, uh, a hammer curl or other things like that. We really want to think about intention with this kind of stuff. So what I usually will do is I'll separate my, my days to where if I have a push-pull leg split, I'll typically have a width focused pull day, a thickness focused pull day, a quad focused leg day, a hamstring focused leg day to where, you know, I'm still going to be working exercises that will target those uh, kind of overall muscles, but the focus of that day will kind of be on a specific part, if that makes sense. So let's say, for example, a thickness related pull day. If I'm doing back exercises thinking about thickness, I'm going to be doing a close grip pull down or a uh, cable row or a dumbbell row or other things like that. I'm not really going to be focusing too, too much on wide grip pull downs, wide grip rows, but I'm also going to be targeting muscles that are all within that, that spectrum there, if that makes sense. So if you're thinking about, you know, a thickness related pull day, I want to make sure I'm working on the thickness of my back, but I don't want to just be doing rows the whole time through. So what other exercises of different movements can I incorporate that will also focus on thickness that aren't just going to be cable row, single arm cable row, etc, etc. I still want variety, but I want it focused around a certain goal. And to give another example, let's say a push day. So on my chest dominant push day, I still will incorporate some shoulder exercises, but the majority will be kind of chest. And the other way around too, on my shoulder dominant day, I will still incorporate like an incline press or a cable fly, but the majority will still be kind of shoulder related exercises. So that's something to think about is, even though you might have a certain order like a push pull leg, you still wanna include at least some sort of diversification within that split or kind of maybe have dominance of certain days to where like I like to start my my weeks with my hamstring dominant leg day because my hamstrings are my weak point 
but my chest dominant push day because my chest is my weak point. And I'll typically finish off the week with maybe more of my strong suits, but it will still be within that certain order of split. The next thing we want to think about is our exercise order. Now this is something that I always kind of, you know, stir around and I'll kind of play with it here and there. But we want to think about, you know, now that we've chosen our exercises that are going to be most beneficial to us, how can we order them in a way that's going to make the most sense, if that makes sense. So let's say, for example, a lot of people like to do this, and I, and I usually do this as well, but I'll kind of touch on it in more specifics in just a second. So let's say, for example, we have our push day. So we know we're going to do a bench press. Um, we're typically going to want to start with the majority of our compounds or our main kind of lift for that day at the beginning and then taper off into more of the assisted exercises. Uh, so maybe if you do a bench press to start off with, you might want to do an incline dumbbell press and then maybe a seated shoulder press and then maybe a cable fly. We kind of want to work from our main compound into our assistive compounds and then finish off with the smallest muscle groups or more isolating exercises. So after you've kind of moved through from a chest, a main compound into an assistive chest exercise to maybe a cable fly, maybe a shoulder press, and then you might want to do lateral raises and then a tricep exercise. So see how we've kind of worked our way from, we've, do, we've done a chest, shoulder, and tricep exercise, chest, shoulder, and tricep, chest and shoulder, shoulder and tricep, shoulder, tricep. Does that make sense? Sorry, that was my dog. He's jumping on the bed. So in regards to that, we want to think about that we want to hit our main muscle groups before our assistive or synergistic muscle groups. So let's say, for example, push day, we don't want to be doing triceps before we do chest exercises because then our triceps will kind of be our bottleneck or our limiting factor before we kind of can fully max out that chest or fully kind of work it to where it needs to be. So we really want to think about almost like a tapering of we'll start with our main kind of work into our still kind of major muscle groups but working from our biggest to smallest in terms of order of importance or kind of compound to specific exercises. So our last category we want to focus on is our set and rep number. So now that we know our exercise order we want to figure out how many sets and reps we're going to be doing and that kind of varies depending on what your activity is or your goal is. Uh, I know that some power lifters since they have their volume lower they'll do higher sets to kind of make up for that. So rather than three sets of 10, if they're doing three reps or five reps, they're going to be doing six sets or seven sets of three or five sets of five, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, and for bodybuilding, I would say stick to around three to four sets. Um, I think that's going to be the best bang for your buck. You're not going to go over because you know, aside from, from physical fatigue, sometimes it's very mentally fatiguing to just think about, oh, I got to do five sets of 10, my gosh. So I find that you kind of save some in the tank subconsciously because you know you have more sets to where if you have three sets or four sets, you can really, you know, after the first set, hit your stride, but then kind of burn yourself out because you know you're not going to be doing that many sets, if that makes sense. Um, and in regards to rep and set proportions, I would say I typically do about six exercises per workout and I'll do about four sets for my compound exercises, three sets for my isolating exercises. And the rep amount will kind of depend on your goal as well as kind of what what you're in in terms of your block, if that makes sense. So if I'm doing a, a more volume oriented block, I'm going to keep my reps a little bit higher. So that way I'm doing maybe 10 to 15 reps, maybe eight to 12s for the compounds, 10 to 15 for the isolation exercises. But if I'm doing more of a strength related block, I might do like six to 10 reps for the compounds and maybe let's say like eight to 12 for the isolation exercises. So we're still within that hypertrophy spectrum, but we've moved from more volume to now more intensity within that four week block. So typically I will, uh, you kind of have to think about it in terms of a triangle, I guess, to where if you have your volume, your intensity, and then 
I guess I would say maybe your, your set amount is your third one. And volume and intensity are kind of inversely proportional. So if you have a weight that you can do and you kind of you fail at around 10 to 12, then the intensity of that weight is not going to be as high as a weight that you would fail around six to eight because the volume of that is higher. So proportionally, the intensity will be lower. So if we think about that trifecta, our set amount will be determined by our volume and our intensity. So let's kind of go back to that powerlifting thought. If we're doing sets of three, that's going to be a very high intensity compared to if we're doing sets of 10 because our proportionally our weight will be much higher. And if we're doing three reps to keep that intensity high, we still need to make sure we're maxing out our efforts. So we want to increase our sets based off of that. I don't want to get too far into the weeds here. So typically I, since I'm keeping it either, you know, let's say eight to 12 and 10 to 15 for my compounds and isolation exercises, or if I'm keeping it like six to 10 and eight to 12 in more of a strength block, I'm still going to kind of be in the same spectrum, so I'm going to stick with around three to four sets per exercise. Uh, so I hope that's not too confusing. I can probably touch on this a little bit more and maybe write it out a little bit more to kind of make more sense of it all. But if we think about all these different categories and kind of just, it really helps to write it all out and just be able to get it out of your head and on paper and solidify it a little bit more. I still do this. I'll still, if I kind of reformulate a program, I'll still kind of start at the basics and start from scratch and kind of break it down step by step of, you know, have I changed anything? Is anything different now in regards to how I feel like I'm developing or what my mentality is now? And I'll still kind of just break it down category by category and reformulate everything. And it helps to really write it out and, and kind of draw a line or switch things around until you kind of hash that out in your head. And I'll still find that I'll switch up my set amounts, I'll switch up my exercise order as I kind of reformulate programs every year or uh, throughout the year, other things like that. So I hope that helps. So it's all going to be specific to you and depend on your priorities. Um, so really just think about what's going to give you the most benefit. Um, so if you're uh, an athlete, you know, you don't want to be spending too much time bulking up if you need speed or agility. And if you're a bodybuilder, you don't want to be spending too much of your efforts trying to increase your strength because that's going to take away from your hypertrophy. Um, so really just think about and prioritize what your overall goals are and then kind of base your structure of your training around that. So I hope that helps in some way and I'll probably be making more videos kind of specific to what I do. But if you have any questions uh, on something that might be more individual to you, then just reach out and I'd be happy to help you. So I'll see you on the next one.